next, an update on a story we first brought you several years ago. In 2014, a British father of three was kidnapped by the Ethiopian authorities and put on death row, where he's been ever since. But over the weekend, it was announced that after four years, Andy Sege had been pardoned and he is expected to be released today. His family haven't been able to speak to him since his kidnap and we're going to be talking to them in a few minutes. They are here, smiling away. But let's remind you that we first spoke to Andy's partner, Yemi Haila Mariam, exactly three years ago today, and this is what she told us then. It's really, really challenging, especially as the time goes on. Um, you know, like you're trying to keep... Uh, we have three children. Um, one is 15, the others are twins, eight-year-olds. Um, the, the biggest challenge is trying to keep hope alive um, and, and trying to tell them that this is something that's going to be resolved. Um, I mean, in a very rec recent incident that I can recount to you is... Um, um, the ambassador, the UK ambassador is currently here in the UK um, and, um, and I was thinking of sending some letters um, through him and I asked them to write letters um, um, to their dad and, and I think that's one of the biggest errors that I felt that I did because I was like trying to um, talk, I, I thought I was trying to do something very positive, there's a, more of a guarantee that it might be delivered um, and they were just in pieces and they just couldn't finish any of the letters, especially one, uh, my daughter, um, and I kind of regretted asking them and it's really, really, really very, very difficult. Um, effectively, we are also in prison, so it's very, very, very difficult to keep a semblance of hope um, and, and, um, and stay strong for the children. Well, Yemi is here under very different circumstances alongside her and Andy's twins who are now 11, Yilak and Manabi. Also here is Maya Foa, the director of the organisation Reprieve, which has been working with Andy Sege and his family. Welcome. Thank you. How are you feeling? Actually, <laughs> I'm a little bit tearing when I saw that clip. Um, yeah, absolutely static. Static would be the word. and. Um, full of anticipation uh, to actually hear his voice. We haven't heard it for the last four years, so. Which is remarkable, actually, isn't it? It is, yeah. it is very remarkable. I can't believe we are where we are. Really? Yeah, yeah, I can't. Did you, in your heart of hearts, did you expect to see him again? I did. Yeah. I mean, I, ha I mean, like, you've got to have that kind of hope alive, you know, like, but, but, but it was becoming challenging to try to find a way on how you can. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but, but yeah, I did, actually, mm. I did. And why might it be today? What news have you had? Um, the chief of staff of the Ethiopian prime minister has tweeted saying that he's going to be released today. Um, so, so, and the foreign office is trying to confirm yeah. um, his release. So, so that's where we are right now, as okay. things stand. Okay. How are you two feeling about this? Great. Amazing. How did you hear them? When did you get the news? Saturday. Did you? <laughs> He came up to me and he was like, I've got really good news. And we weren't actually supposed to know because he sort of listened to our mum's conversation on the phone. And we were going to find out later because it wasn't um, official. So mum didn't want to tell us to get our hopes up. But he found out and then he came up and he told me. And we were all really surprised. We were so happy. But could you believe it, though? No, I don't think I really did at first. Mm -hmm. When you think of your dad, what image comes into your head? Because you haven't seen him or spoken to him for four years. I don't really know because um, there's this picture that there's up in our house that is um, right near the doorway and it's the only thing that I really remember, to be honest, that when I think of him now. What about you? Um, I remember us in um, Exmouth Market after we ate our final meal together and when we took that photo. How much have you missed him? A lot, very, 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 very much. What about you? I don't think I can explain how much I've missed him. What will be the first thing you say to him when you see him? That I love him. Oh. What about you? I mean, what's going to be the first thing that you say? I guess I'm OK. Are you OK? Yeah, 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 because I mean, like, I, I have absolutely no idea how he's been. And um, I'm sure it's not, it's not been easy. Mm. Um, so, yeah, just to see how he is, actually. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Maya from Reprieve, uh, tell our audience, first of all, remind them 
why you believe he was abducted at an airport in Yemen, so outside of Ethiopia, by the Ethiopian authorities, and why he's been pardoned. Well, this story actually started when he was living in London with his family in 2011. He was sentenced to death in absentia. He was living in London, mm. sentenced to death without any due process for his political beliefs, for his pro-democracy activism. And then he was traveling for work and he was kidnapped in the airport, as you say. So the first we learned of the case was when Yemi came in to see us at the office nearly, well, four years ago now. Yeah. Uh, and over the last four years, we've been campaigning with this incredible family that you see here mm. to try to get him released from unlawful detention. Because again, this is a man who was unlawfully sentenced to death, unlawfully kidnapped and rendered, and has been held unlawfully for four years away from his family. So I think it's a really positive sign mm. that he's been pardoned. I mean, it's wonderful news. It's a positive sign for Ethiopia. It's positive in terms of the Brits and, and what they've been doing to try to get him out. And obviously we are absolutely delighted. Mm. Yeah, like, why did you just pick up your sister's hand and hold her hand? Because I'm so excited to see my dad. I can't wait to see him. Can you... Do you know why he's been pardoned? Um, well, I mean, like, um, since January, the um, Ethiopian, the previous Prime Minister, yeah. there's been a, a Prime Minister change, um, had announced saying that they were going to be pardoning uh, political prisoners. Um, and so, but they didn't have a definitive list um, and nothing really um, that backed up the statements. Uh, but um, slowly they have been releasing and they have been releasing big, uh, you know, like a huge number of mm -hmm. uh, prisoners. Um, and then, and they were like, were wondering. So, so it's been like, a long six, four months, I think, yeah. So then finally now it mm. happened that uh, he's one of the last ones to come out. How, what is your view of, of the British authorities and the help that they were able to give or not? Well, I mean, like, I, I, so the, fundamentally, you know, like what, what I believe is like they never really like took into account um, the merits of the case, you know, like what it's about, i.e. he was like actually kidnapped in an international airport, illegally um, taken from one country to another, mm. and then has been languishing in prison where there was absolutely no legal redress for him. Um, and so, so the UK government said that they do not interfere in another country's legal system was their stance. Um, and for that, um, there has to be you know, for them to take that stance, there would have had to be a legal process. Mm -hmm. And in this, there was not. So it was like a, a very farcical and circular uh, argument, you know, like so. And I, I, and I think, you know, like the way I think the UK approaches this, um, they have one size fits all policy when it comes to consular and supporting British nationals. Um, so, so I think that was where it was. Now, you know, saying that once this opportunity presented itself, um, the ambassador in Ethiopia and also the staff here in the foreign office were actually exceptional uh, to take that, you know, to take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, but that is three and a half years later, so we have to make a note of that. Mm. <laughs> so, so yeah. Mm. You used the word challenging. It's been challenging, it has which been. is potentially an understatement, I am guessing. Yes. Can you describe what it's been like? knowing that your partner has the part your partner the father of your children has been abducted has been sentenced to death in another country is in jail and you're not able to have any conversation with him yeah i mean uh, yeah, exactly and, and i think that is the apps the biggest biggest challenge and also um I mean, initially you are very helpless. I mean, uh, and then of course you have organizations like Reprieve, um, also my MP and his MP, you know, like have been very amazing. But even with all those forces behind you, you start exhausting all the avenues in which you think you can be able to solve it. Um, and, um, and then as that list gets smaller and smaller and smaller, uh, it becomes hugely challenging. Um, you are also effectively really in prison because you can't escape the problem and you shouldn't escape the problem mm -hmm. because you've got to get him out. You are the only one who, you know, you're his only hope. Um, so, but it's all so consuming, that's it's, what you it's, mean. It's absolutely yeah. all consuming. Uh, in the meantime, you have children, you have, and also I'm, I work. So, so it was, f yeah, it was f challenging. Mm. When could he be back in the country? Well, I mean, we hear that today may be the day he's released. He could be back 
he could be back uh, immediately. I suspect he'll spend a couple of days in Ethiopia before mm -hmm. he comes back, but we're hoping to see him very soon. I know these guys have got plans already for chess games and matches, mm -hmm. so very soon we hope. It's amazing news. It's not often we are able to report <laughs> some amazing news on this programme, but this, this really is it, bearing in mind the caveat about we don't know how he is and yeah, in terms exactly. of the conditions of the last four years, but you will be getting him home, it would seem, and the release expected today. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for coming back on the programme. Obviously, you. please, if he feels OK, we would really like him on the programme this All week right. or next week. You know that. OK. Thank yes. you very Thank much. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.